as much as 95% of the entire world population do struggle with procrastination. So the question is, is there a way to finally beat procrastination? And the answer is yes. You know, I once told a group of friends that if you keep negotiating with your distractions, you will never be consistent in life. And that's a fact. So today, I'll be sharing with you 14 tips which I've learned over the past 8 to 10 years that finally helped me put procrastination behind me. So you want to stick through to the end of this video. Now the first question we need to answer is what is procrastination? It's a situation whereby we exchange tasks in order of what we find more pleasant and pleasurable. So instead of wanting to do what he or she is actually supposed to do, you engage in something else that you find more pleasant that also seems easier. So a typical example of this would be like maybe you're supposed to study your books and then you want to catch up on the series and you just easily swap that and the particular thing you're supposed to have done, you end up not doing it. So that's an example of procrastination. Now, procrastination has consequences. Part of the consequences would include the guilt and the shame we sometimes feel when we procrastinate over time, over and over again. And of course, we end up not achieving our goals, our aspirations during medical school. So procrastination is not just a thief of time, it will also end up stealing your goals from you. Is it possible to overcome procrastination? Yes. The challenge here is that for some persons, procrastination has just become the habit that they are used to. So you have to create patterns and structures that would enable you to form new habits. And this will be part of the foundation of some of the things that I'll be sharing with you today that will help you beat procrastination. So the first thing you want to do is you want to recognize that you are procrastinating. Because if one cannot even acknowledge the fact that he or she is procrastinating, then the solution is very, very, very far off. Now, some things that would indicate, some indicators that would be able to point out to you that, okay, maybe you should actually take a look at yourself to know if you're a procrastinator would include the fact that you have a pile of things to do on your to-do list. You know how we make to-do lists and, you know, we sometimes check them off. But if you look at your to-do list currently, you have things piled up maybe from weeks past. If you look at your study schedule, you have topics to keep spilling over into the next day, weeks undone, and that will be an indication that you're probably procrastinating. Something else that would indicate that you're procrastinating would include filling your day with tasks that are not so difficult. You know you have some important things to do, but because you feel those things are more strenuous, practical example would be some courses you enjoy. You will tend to want to spend your time reading those courses as against the one that requires you to put in more mental strength. Now, that would be a sign that you're also procrastinating. Also, if you're waiting for yourself to always be in the right mood or the right time to get things done, that would also showcase the fact that you are procrastinating. So the first step you want to do is you have to recognize that you are procrastinating, acknowledge that it's a problem, and then you move on from there. The second thing is work out why you're procrastinating. Now, this can be different for a lot of persons. I will just point out two things that could be the answer as to why you're procrastinating. One of the common challenges of persons why they procrastinate is that they are disorganized. So being disorganized means you're not even aware of the things you're supposed to be doing, let alone talk about knowing what you have done or what you left what you have left undone. Because if you have a list of things you're supposed to do daily with regards to your academics, your work, and other areas of your life that you're tagging along with through medical school, you'll be able to identify, okay, I didn't do this in this particular point in time or at this particular point in time. And then you can make necessary adjustments at some point. But in a case where you don't even have a plan, things just keep jumbling up here and there, calling for your attention at different times and at the points when they are seemingly very urgent. Now, that can be why you are procrastinating and you may just have to get yourself a bit organized. You know, I've made videos on planning, which you can check off. You'll see it pop up on the screen right now to know how you can plan yourself in medical school. And also with regards to your personal time management. Now, the other thing is you find some task boring or unpleasant. Narrowing it down to medical school, I'll give a practical example. While I was in school, the courses I found most interesting I'll take preclinicals for example with physiology and anatomy. Now there was challenge with biochemistry and histology because I didn't find this particular courses interesting. So that meant there was a temptation for me to always push them. I was like, you know what? I'll read this later, I'll study this later. And that kept going on for a while until I had to snap myself back into reality that I cannot continue like this. So what you would have to do in such instances, you would try and make those particular courses a bit interesting for you. You spice up your studying with videos, you spice up your studying with anything else aside the regular boring textbook that can just help stimulate your interest until you find passion for that particular course or you pick an interest in it and then you can run with that interest that you found. Number three is act as you go. So I've learned this over time that if 
I'm going about my daily activity and someone is like, okay, can you do this for me? If it's something I can do at that particular point in time, I'm going to take care of it. If it's either searching out something or sending a document, sending a material, I'm doing it there and then. I'm not pushing it for later. You know how people can be like, okay, later, when I get home, remind me tomorrow and all of that. No, I've stopped that. So when someone is asking me to do this for me or there's something I need to do and it's glaring to me that while I'm standing there, maybe I'm buying something or I'm in a vehicle, it just occurs to me, I'm going to get it done there and then. So these are other little tasks that, you know, if you accumulate them over time, you will not see that you simply have a lot of things to do. They are low priority tasks, low intensity tasks, but if you keep piling them up, you will end up having so much to do. So learn to act as you go. It will reduce the amount of things you have left undone so that you can channel your productive time and the peak of your energy towards things that are very, very, very vital and very productive for you. Number four is learn to change your environment. Now, your environment in this instance will be divided into two, both your physical environment and your digital environment in quotes. Now, there's a way your environment will be. It will be inspiring for you to study. There's also the way the environment will look. All you feel like is just being snoozy and sleepy and all of that. So you want to look at the physical environment. Is it scattered at things all over the place? You can't be productive in that kind of environment. You would always end up procrastinating. If you look at your environment and all you get is this energy of you know being tired and sleepy that's an indication that you need to modify the environment or even leave the environment anytime that you want to study now your digital environment talks about having notifications buzzing in you know those apps and cool and fine we use them to socialize but imagine having to deal with notifications from all the social media apps that you know i don't want to start mentioning names but you know all of them one minute, two minutes, three minutes, something is coming, someone is uploading something and your attention just keeps flickering all over the place. You would end up checking some of these things and then you lose time, you eventually postpone the task that you were supposed to do at that particular point in time or for that day into the next day. So you want to modify your digital environment. Either when you're studying, you keep your phone aside, somewhere in a drawer where you have to actually maybe stand up to go and get it if you have to use it, or you just turn it off totally, put off notifications, turn off your data so that you can focus and get the things done you're supposed to do. Now, sometimes, even if your physical environment is one that encourages productivity, you might get bored in that space over time, usually after two to three weeks. So it's good to spice up your studying, switch locations and come back to the dominant place where you will typically study. Now, the fifth is create a detailed timeline with specific tasks. I talked about this in the video as regards time management and planning in medical school. Now, if you have just one deadline in a day, for instance, there will be no pressure on you to do the task that you're supposed to do. So, but if you have a list of all the things you're supposed to do, even if you don't attach a particular time, let's say 8 p.m., 8.30 p.m., 9 p.m. and all of that, just the awareness that it doesn't feel like it's only on Monday you have stuff to do. Because I talked about it there that you have planned for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the next week. And my plans then in school usually run in months. So I would realize that there is no space for me to push this thing. And all of these things are important. All of these things are high priority tasks. So I need to find a way to get things done. At best, the only time just for the sake of flexibility will be on Saturdays because it's like a full day. I don't have to go to school, deal with lectures and all of that. So I have more time. Maybe some things, some things can spill over into Saturday. But generally speaking, that positive pressure just keeps me on my toes to make sure I'm checking my list and doing the tasks that I'm supposed to do. Now, this doesn't mean that I always hit 100% of everything I've outlined, but most times at least I get to 90, 92% or even maybe 95%. Now, the other one that is left, I can take care of it during another day or even over the weekend. So, always create a detailed timeline day by day, week by week for something, for a duration that is as long as like a month so that you don't have this false sense of comfort that okay i have so much liberty and i can play around with you know the things i'm supposed to be doing so if you have that it will just keep you under pressure to do what needs to be done at time 